Good morning, good morning, good morning, and happy Wednesday. I am back again, continue reading um, our devotional, Jesus in Red. And the title of today's devotional is The Wisdom of Solomon. The Wisdom of Solomon. The Queen of the South will rise up in judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And indeed, a greater than Solomon is here. That's Luke 11 and 31. <clears throat> Solomon was extremely wise, filthy rich, and politically powerful. When the queen of Sheba saw his wealth and his wisdom, she was overwhelmed and said she hadn't been told the half of it and that's first king 10 and 7 as the bride of christ we've caught a glimpse of the savior through the pages of holy scriptures in him we have access to the manifold wisdom of god have true and everlasting riches in christ and have been invited to participate in the power of prayer Though the medium of believing prayer, we can move the hand of God and govern the destiny of nations. And that's with an S. Hudson Taylor said, the prayer power has never been tried to its full capacity. If we want to see mighty wonders of divine power and grace wrought in the place of weakness failure and disappointment let us answer God's standing challenge call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not but there's a way you have to show up there's something that we have to do we have to call unto him he said and he will answer that means that's a heart posture your heart got to be um, it's got to be right. It's got to be pure. It's got to be authentic. Not how you dress, you know, not how you, you know, not what you put on, you know, he's not worried about that. He's worried about your heart. He is concerned about that to a certain degree, but the Holy Ghost will convict you if, you know, if you're doing too much. But when you come to him, your heart has to be right. If you want an answer, he said, and I show the, and he will show you great and mighty things, which you know, if not. He will show you things that haven't even entered into your heart. Things that you have never even thought about. Have you ever wanted to do some things and you're like, Lord, will it just look like everybody's got, you know, you think about doing this? Well, that person's doing that. Well, you think about doing that? Well, that person is doing it. God said, I'll show you some things that are top that. I'll show you some and tell you some things that haven't even entered in the heart of man. You know, you, you're talking to the creator of everything and the creator of all things. Just because somebody making shirts and you and, and God unching you to uh, uh, start making shirts, you know, you got to understand your message and your journey is going to be different. So you can't fall prey to just because somebody else is doing it that you can't do it. The devil is a lie. If God told you to make shirt, make it. God told you to make cups, make it. Whatever God has told you to do in this hour, trust what he's telling you to do. Because we have to understand our journey, our purpose is different. It doesn't make a difference what somebody else is doing. Now it's time to do some soul search. Do trials cloud eternity from my eyes? Do I seek your wisdom through believing prayer? I'm going to read that again. Do trials cloud eternity from from my eyes, from my eyes, your eyes. Do I seek your wisdom through believing prayer? And that's a question mark. And now here is today's prayer, this morning's prayer. Father, help me to have peace and joy by believing you have my eternity in your hands. He definitely have our eternity in his hands. But it's our choice where we will spend eternity. So don't get that prayer twisted. <laughs> he have our eternity in his hand. 
But we make the decision where we spend eternity. We serve a just God. And wherever you choose to go, wherever you choose to spend it, he's going to grant you your wish. He's going to give you your heart desire. It is what it is. But I'm going to read this Luke 11 and 31. I'm going to read it in my, my study Bible here. Um, okay. The Ninevites and the Queen of, South, of the South had turned to God with far less evidence than Jesus was giving his listeners. And far less we and far less than we have today. We have eyewitness reports of the rising Jesus, the continuing power of the Holy Spirit unleashed at Pentecost, easy access to the Bible, and knowledge of 2,000 years of Christ's act through the church, through his church, with the knowledge and insight available to us. Our response to Christ ought to be even more complete and wholeheartedly. What that scripture is saying, there's been enough evidence. There was less evidence in God's days and people were still turning. But this generation here, we need more evidence. We need more insight. We need more proof. You, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna be so caught up and need more insight and proof that you're gonna be, you're gonna uh, get your answers in heaven. Sometimes we're looking for proof that's not even gonna matter uh, where you spend eternity. That should be your 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 uh, uh, main objective. That should be your main concern, not how you got here. No, you got to worry about where you're going. You know, sometimes we get concerned and worried, you know, about the wrong things. But what it's saying in that passage is that there, you know, we, we got Bibles of different translations. You know, you got the word given, you counts of, you know, how things happen, you know, when it happened and how it happened and why it happened. Um, we got preachers, leaders, uh, apostles, you know, we got all of these um tools at our hands and there is no reason why we should still be walking around saying we need more evidence we need more proof we need more insight that's the trick of the enemy to uh uh uh, uh to steal your soul and you wind up in 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 hell because you even if you got the proof even if you got the evidence even if you got the insight is that gonna change your heart is that gonna change your view again that's just a trick of the enemy it's just a trick of the enemy. Don't be tricked out of your soul trying to get evidence and proof that's not gonna that's not gonna uh, make a difference in the end. You got to make a choice. You you better go through this word. You better get uh, under someone that's speaking the truth. You know, some people will just tell you just j just get somewhere. No, I got to get somewhere. You know, where the anointing is, I got to get somewhere where the present where God's presence is known. You know, you got a lot of folks just gathering and they look at you because you're not gathering. I need more than just a gathering. I need more than just entertainment. I need more than just a show. And I ain't against those that need that. That's not what that's all about. But I'm talking about for me, I'm cut from a different cloth. My material is different from yours. It don't make it greater than yours. It just makes it different than yours. And if that's all you need, I'm not here to talk against it. It is what it is. But like it said, uh, it said, with the knowledge and the insight available to us, our response to Christ ought to be even more complete. It's saying we don't need anything else. Stop looking for evidence. Stop looking for more proof. Sometimes people want you to prove that you say by how you dress and how many times you show up to church. You'll be surprised of how folks is dressing and they stay in the church and the things they go home and do. So you, you can't be moved or impressed by that. Fruit. Remember what I said yesterday? And your fruit ain't just you showing up at church. Your fruit ain't just you wearing a long skirt. Your fruit ain't just your uh, buttons buttoning up into your throat, and you know, and you can't even swallow. That, that, that you know, <laughs> that's just a dress code. That's just a head count. No, fruit. How you loving? How you treating me? You know, that's what I'm talking about. 
it says it ought to be complete and wholehearted. It should come from your heart. You, that we've had enough evidence that we should be persuaded. We've got enough evidence that we should be convinced that Jesus is who he is and that God is who he is. And so God don't want us to miss out on the kingdom because the devil got us feeling like he's hiding something. You know, he's keeping something from us. He don't want us, you know, that's how he tricked Eve. Oh, you know, he don't want you to eat from the, the tree of knowledge because he don't want you to know what he know. You know, he think you're going to be smarter than him. What? <laughs> you know, <laughs> Lord Jesus, let me get off here. Anyway, that's the end of the devotional. Again, the title was the wisdom of Solomon. We got to have wisdom in this hour. Stop looking for insight. Stop looking for um. Uh, um Stop looking for insight. Stop looking for more proof and just ask God for some wisdom. That's all you need. All you need is wisdom in this hour because your wisdom is what's going to help you make the decision that you need to make. I'm telling you, time is winding. We don't have the time that we think we have to keep playing and, you know, in and out and out and in. You better you better get somewhere and, and, and be still because you don't know when your number is going to be called. And the moment you decide to get out, you know, get out on the dance floor, that may be the day that, you know, that your number is called. And do you know what you're going to hear when you stand before the almighty God? You ain't going to be dancing, that's for sure. You ain't going to be creeping, that's for sure. So we got to, you know, it's, you know, like I said again, time is winding. The devil has blinded a lot of people of the time. People still looking, talking about they want things to go back how it used to be before COVID. It's stop. It's not going back. Don't, we're in a different time. We're in a different time. We're in a, di a different season. Don't get caught up on what we was, what was going on, and what we was doing, and what we had uh, uh, two year, almost three years ago. You better look at what's going on today, and what you need to be doing today, and how you need to be preparing today. Last year, two years, three years, gone. This is it. What are you doing today? Worrying about last year is, is, is just like worrying about yesterday. <laughs> it's just like worrying about tomorrow and you ain't even made it. The Bible said, you know, tomorrow take care of itself. Be concerned about what's going on today. A lot of people worried about the wrong thing at the wrong time. Know the seasons that we in. You don't have time to keep going the way that you're going. There's a life to be lived. And there's a heaven to gain. But there's also a hell to gain as well. Where will you lift your eyes? What are you striving uh, to spend eternity? What words are you wanting to hear? You can't hear well done, good, and faithful if you haven't been faithful. If you haven't lived a life, you can't talk about what you used to do. It's about what you was doing. Not what you used to do. Lord, I, you know, I did this in your name and I did that. He just going to say depart. You know, I, you know, I never knew you. So we got to, we got to, we got to wake up. <laughs> we got to wake up and we got to look at the times that we are living in. Like I said, yes, God, you know, we definitely need to prepare prepare to leave here you know policy wise but you got you can't just prepare to die you got to prepare to live because that soul is going somewhere so go past your policy you know you got some people that's got a hundred thousand dollar policy and ain't nothing wrong with that that you know do you boo boo you know but where are you going to lift your eyes who are you leaving the money to Make sure, you know, that they ain't just stuck at that money and stuck at that policy. Because you know what? They got to make a decision too. I'm just saying. I got to get out of here. I pray that everyone have an amazing day. Um, however way God allows you to um, enjoy your day, just try to enjoy it. Speak life. Don't allow no negativity. Don't you be negative. 
Don't entertain it via text, via Facebook, via Messenger, uh, via email. Enjoy your day. Be chaos and 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 mess free. You just want nothing but peace. I'm telling. I don't know about nobody else. <laughs> I didn't know peace looked like this. But I tell you, I'm enjoying it now, and I wouldn't. I wouldn't trade it for nothing the world has to offer. I'm just talking about me. I can't talk about nobody else. But I got to get out of here. Again, speak life. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're dealing with, um, no matter what's to come, no matter who left, uh, no matter who looked over you, no, don't worry about any of that. Everything is going to work out for your good. Trust me. It's going to work out for your good. Until next time, everyone, be blessed.